This feels like a domain already. Is this a domain? It's a nice domain with hot springs. Not you again. Oh my god. The most pitiful pipe. Really no regard at all for human life, huh? And nudity. Unfortunately. Looks like he's just around for the ride. But no worse for wear emotionally, it seems. Poor Junpei. He was a good kid. He didn't deserve any of that. Okay, another interesting role. He really is just a kid, huh? Yeah, we definitely established the hierarchy there. And power. Sukuna doesn't care about Junpei. It seems like the only thing that would ever sway Sukuna is power. The only time I can remember seeing him interested in anything was in Guro's mystery power, whatever that is. You'd have to offer something that would benefit him. Something tells me that Ghetto was confident in that outcome from the beginning. Wow, they're, they're actually that convicted. They don't even care if they are annihilated, as long as they bring about what they want to see in the world. I hope he's the first to go. Oh, an attack on the school. That's pretty crazy. That's the plan, but it hasn't really gone that way so far. Yeah. The real threat. The longer this goes on, the more it seems like Gojo's gonna become their target. He's sort of the obstacle to everything, no? Huh. This has been set up for quite some time. Oh, is this a new opening? Oh yeah, we're like halfway halfway through. Let's see if this intro is as bleak as the first one. Damn, look at Panda, he's ripped. Oh no, here we go. <laughs> Screaming in pain. And the origin of rage. And dessert. Oh no. <laughs> the angst. Hey, there we go. And Panda. That's kind of cool to see the progression in openings like that. The first one was so hopeless. It's like, there's nothing I can do. I'm not meant for this world. I'm, I'm wearing a mask. I just want to give up. Why am I even here just to suffer? So far, this is like, man, I got a lot of rage. Where does it come from? <laughs> Gotta keep it moving. Is this a turning point for the heroes and their outlook? Yeah, there we go. And he's an elephant expanding the zoo. Change reality in the face of bitter truths. Got big battles coming up. Maybe we're traveling abroad as well. Why is he so expressionless when he punches? <laughs> hey, that's a nice touch. Hell yeah, that was cool. Sort of rewinding back the whole thing at the end. I like that opening a lot better than the first one. I like it better musically, but I like that it encapsulates what seems to be the, the growth for the characters. I mean, the first half of the season, you know, they're there, they're showing up, and they're good kids, but it feels like they're all sort of lost in their way, but they're looking to find it. You know, they're making the best of what might feel like a hopeless situation. They're moving closer and closer to what they actually believe in, a process that will inevitably make them stronger, a lot stronger. It's also great because we've got not one shot of Panda, but two, once in an office and once in just ultra beast form. I can't wait to see more of Panda fighting, like actually fighting. What is domain would look like. Guarantee you it's amazing. And one thing that is exciting about the intro, if it's a prediction of what's to come, the first half of the season kind of left Yuji somewhat isolated, faking his own death. There's a little bit of a vacuum that that forms, you know, what you come to expect in anime, that part of what makes it great is the crew. There's a chance that that sweetness will be heightened in the reunion this half of the season by that very absence. It's gonna feel really cool, I think, when they're all involved and on the same page. We've got the cast, right? Now it's time to go nuts. Episode 14, Kyoto Sister School Exchange Event, Team Battle Zero, here we go. Time for the tournament arc. We clash our abilities, but more importantly, our personalities. That's an interesting YouTube concept. <laughs> That's my, my favorite drinking game. Just tell me that I'm great a lot. Drink every time Gojo is great, and then die. Speaking of having a good death. And these two are an interesting pair, too. They're both awesome, but so different in disposition, which makes them perfect. Respect from Gojo. He's in a lot of danger. How do you deal with that? He's got my personal guarantee. Exactly. 
Quite the pair. Waku waku. Waku waku. Channeling is it or Anya? Is there a way you can make a dramatic entrance? Oh, re reveal of the tournament would be awesome. Mystery fighter. I feel like some of them will be angry. Who will it be? <laughs> of course it will. It wouldn't be a good plan if it didn't. If your plan doesn't solve global warming, I don't want to hear it. Nothing could go wrong. You're in great hands, <laughs> Fallen Gojo. But also nothing could go wrong, because it's Gojo. Oh, this is interesting. What is this form? Alien? This legendary Okotsu. His reputation is being built up so well. I wonder if he'll even show up this season. <laughs> Nothing as condescending as a good Ada. Yeah, we've been introduced. New character. Nishimiya Momo. And Ultron. <laughs> One of those, huh? Who we've seen? Miwa, yeah. Assistant to the upper ranking member of the school. Yori Utahimi. Kime? Gojo seems like the kind of guy who never shows up on time. Despite the fact that he has teleportation powers. Relatable. You know the kind of person I'm talking about? Gojo is the kind of person to live the closest to school, but always be the last one there, if you know what I mean. That's one of anxiety's useful functions, I guess. It makes you on time to things. Gojo does not have a whole lot of anxiety about punctuality. Though, like I said, I feel like that's probably because he has a much, much broader focus. There are things way more significant to him than how irritated his students are with him. He was probably just there a couple seconds ago. You're not seeing the beauty, but I'm seeing. Oh, and then he just came out in a box. <laughs> what a way to introduce him. <laughs> this is so bizarre. <laughs> no one's even vomiting. What a disappointment. Though I have a feeling this is what Gojo wanted. This is the reaction he was looking for. Shock. Whoops. Google, I'm not even trying that one. <laughs> Nope. Again, that might have been his attention. This a spit in the face of upper management. Fire me. You can. You need me to run this place. Okay. He already came out of the box and made a face. What do you want? And Yuji taking the fall for Gojo's blood. Gojo just gets to have a great time. The end. I just have a feeling this is going to lack the, the scale of something like My Hero Academia. It's going to be like 20 people in a room, you know, <laughs> battling amongst themselves. Alright. Nothing too damaging. Very self-aware, yeah. <laughs> That's the purpose of the arc. Damn, to do that to Gojo like that. It's impressive. Kind of so nice. We have met. There's a metaphor there somewhere. That was hers. The mini buster sword. It's gone. And once again, Yuji takes the fall. <laughs> it's interesting how they all have different reactions to him. He's not universally loved. I wonder if there's a connection between how much the students like him and how much they need and expect from him. I felt that way as a teacher sometimes for my students. In the events where I felt some sort of disdain or disregard from students, it was either people who were just really determined to be terrible. Like, for example, I was put in charge of a class that had been specifically selected for behavioral problems after their teacher quit because of them. That was kind of rough. Very interesting experience, though. But also, interestingly, even if it was a very different manifestation, 
manifestation of this dislike or disregard or whatever was from the students who were really high achieving but had a very very specific way they wanted to go about it students who wanted to know exactly what the plan was at all times and were really attached to getting a maximal score and therefore needing to know the perfect way to get that maximal score that runs somewhat counter to my natural disposition as a as a person which was reflected obviously in my disposition as a teacher where I had more of a learning goal than you know a grade goal and outline and was a little bit flexible or loose in how I went about that day to day so the students who really were invested in the grades or were uncomfortable with kind of ambiguity about the structure of the course were the ones that seemed somewhat frustrated by my class in certain cases Yuji's gonna love Gojo first of all because how could you not but second of all because Yuji's just here eager-eyed looking to learn and Gojo is a master I can imagine other students having different priorities I actually come to think of it isn't her goal to you know become a top grade sorcerer so that she can stick it to her parents <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, she's a planner. Not just any punches, though. You can punch at the soul level. He's a lot stronger than you remember, probably. That's really high praise. And who's, like, fought Sukuna, for that matter. Kyoto side meeting. He's the target. Kill! That took me a second there. Wow, imagine telling this to the whole group of students, asking these kids to murder. Yeah, right. Oh, I thought she had different objections to that. But nope, just logistical. I want to hear what the robot thinks. Yeah, there we go. Screw this guy. Forget your bloodline. No need. It's not the same on TV. <laughs> Duh. His plan's better than this guy's plan. <laughs> right, this taste and woman thing. Wow. My respect for this guy just went up by about a thousand. I'm glad there's some common sense in this room. Some common decency. These kids are victims. I mean, they've been through a lot more than I have. They live a life that I'll never live. I can't pretend to understand it. But I feel like this conversation should have just ended at killing a classmate. They kind of brushed that off with mild distaste for the idea. This reeks of isolation, being in the same world too long, losing touch to the world outside of your community. In a way, it's like college. This guy. He's just so likable. Everyone likes blood ties and arrogance. Excited to see what he can do too. The respect. He's got a grudge. あ、何で切れてんの?別に切れてないけど。どうやね。僕何もしてないし。あるいは呪霊と通じているやつがいる。ありえない。I'm wondering about that. Yeah, there's an insider. It might turn out that it's in the Tokyo school. Who <laughs> has made it so much worse? He doesn't have to respect crap. He's Gojo. Deal with it. Oh, I want to be Gojo so badly. I want that kind of freedom. A lot happened. Yeah, I like how each experience he goes through, you know, each little mini arc, becomes fundamental to him, starting even from the first episode. He's really learning through experience. They don't realize the stakes though, neither does Yuji. Let's do a cool pose! Or not. Someone tell her that he's the protagonist. And new ending! You got big shoes to fill. <laughs> I guess if you can't go cool, you can go sweet? That's an angle. You can't outcool the last the last ending. There's no way. I wish I'd known it was the last time I was gonna hear it in video. I would have appreciated it more. Speaking of recapturing a dream. <laughs> Are we gonna get a beach episode? I mean, that's a stupid question. When is the beach episode? Looks like a winter beach episode too. That's somewhat rare. I mean, usually anime does not miss any opportunity for cleavage. It's a cool look though. Panda looks really cute in his scarf and ear mufflers. Both the beginning and the ending are about walking the path, walking a path. Juju Sampo! 
えー、っと、田中She s Tanaka, she can do whatever the hell she wants, like Gojo. That's not very nice, Tanaka, Takara. <laughs> This isn't the fan event, why is he here? <laughs> He's just sort of lurking. Oh, it's on TV. That's televised? She said that to the chef on TV. So as the first episode of the second half of season one, this served as set up for a bunch of things like introducing some of the Kyoto characters we haven't met yet, setting the stakes for the tournament, which is just way more direct than I expected. I mean, I knew that the upper management was not great, but to ask the students just outright like that to kill a, you know, another student, it's kind of off the walls. And then the fact that they only expressed kind of mild distaste at that idea is a lot, but also the reveal of Gojo's suspicion, which may have been raised before, but I don't remember. I sort of had a feeling this was the case, at least, that there's an insider helping the, the villains among the sorcerers which is really interesting and then kind of some closure on yuji the fact that he's at least to a large degree processed the events of the end of season or the first half of season one and is in some key way better for it one thing that's interesting about the show is i feel like the events and the time move pretty quickly it's only been 13 14 episodes but yuji's already been through a lot and it's pretty clear to see the fact that he's progressing through his experiences and the more i see of that the more i'm interested in what his final outlook will be what will be his, his challenge or you know the the crux of his decision or, or whatever this is culminating towards but Either way, this is setting up to be a really cool tournament, not just because tournament arcs are, are great by nature typically, but because there's a lot more going on here than just a friendly battle between schools.